More on today's data, the economy, and yesterday's Fed decision. We want to bring in our guest, uh, Megan Green, Harvard Kennedy School senior fellow, and uh, Jay Bryson, Wells Fargo acting chief economist. Uh, welcome to you both. Are you both convinced, by the way, that the Fed won't? I, we, well, I mean, they said they're not going to do anything next year, but are you both convinced they won't and they won't need to? Megan. Yeah, so I am actually convinced by that. I do think it's likely that the Fed will have to stay put next year. Um, growth should continue to decelerate a little bit, but again, we're still growing well above potential. Um, Jay Powell, interestingly, did go ahead and um, sort of confess yesterday that maybe, you know, full employment is a bit lower than they thought, and maybe we need to run the labor market even hotter. Um, I don't think we'll see the traditional late cycle spike in inflation. Um, and so I think inflation will remain muted. And that means that the Fed doesn't really have to do anything unless we get some kind of um, black swan event, unless trade escalates massively and then the risks are on the downside. Jay? Yeah, so we'll do the, the Fed, Fed one better than that. I mean, as we announced in our um, annual economic outlook yesterday, we think the Fed's pretty much on hold through the end of 2021. I mean, I think if they're going to make a mistake at this point, they're going to let the economy run a little bit too hot and bring inflation up. I mean, if, if you know, if, if you were to say to Jay Powell, I think a year from now the, the inflation rate is going to be at 3%. We don't believe that, right. but if, if you were to say that, I think he would, he would smile and say, wow, that's great news. Uh, we're finally getting inflation kind of back up, uh, you know, does, uh, higher than we want. How do you think the election is going to play next year into CapEx spending and to the degree that you think this China trade war is going to continue, which I can't imagine it doesn't in some form or another, what that does and what you think Jay Powell has to do as a result? So I'll take the first one in terms of the, you know, in, yeah. in terms of the election. So we've done a study where we went back to every presidential election since 1948. And we, we you know, statistically, we tried to see if there was something odd about a presidential election year, because there's always kind of uncertainty. And what we found out, if anything, the economy runs a little bit hotter during a presidential election year. And so I don't think it's going to have a major impact on, um, on CapEx next year. Now, Trade with China is a different sort of story, and if we still continue to have tensions there, that could weigh on, on CapEx spending as it did. But again, I think the presidential election kind of takes a back seat in terms of some of this uh, uncertainty on its effect on CapEx and, and on you, consumer just spending. Just to, to put a fine point on it, you said that, that the economies typically run hotter, you said, in a election year. Does CapEx spending run hotter as well? Yeah, I so was under the impression that actually... CapEx spending typically goes down in the six months prior to an election. No, so what we found, well, so if you look at the whole year as, as a whole, the annual average, I mean, what we found there was not only did CapEx run a little bit hotter, um, but also did consumer spending did as well. I mean, these aren't huge sorts of things, but it's, you know, a, a point here is that it's not like the economy really decelerates normally in a presidential election year. But I don't see any reason to expect the economy to actually run hotter next year. I think the U.S. economy should slow down a little bit. We're still growing well above potential. We're not getting any kind of fiscal stimulus, probably. Right. We'll have total gridlock on that front. I don't think we can expect a whole lot of monetary stimulus either. And so absent those things, a boost in the labor supply or a boost in productivity, there's no reason that the U.S. should continue to grow above potential. So you know, I think we should see the economy continue to slow down. And I don't see any reason why we get a rebound in CapEx, particularly given that the most pernicious piece of this trade war, which really is the uncertainty, is set to persist no matter what happens right. with the December tariffs. Megan, we're going to be hearing from Christine Lagarde today. Uh, I think it's the first public uh, and statement that she will be making in her new role. Um, how, do you, how do you sort of handicap the situation in Europe and what you think happens there and therefore what happens here? Well, I think that the European economies um, broadly in aggregate tend to be uh, looking worse than the U.S. economy. Right. I think we're seeing a slowdown, obviously. Germany may be sort of <laughs> bottoming out, but at incredibly low levels. So I think what we can expect to look for from Christine Lagarde today really is um, her priorities for her presidency. I think that's the best that we'll get. There won't be really, I mean, there aren't any policy changes today, but we'll get a sense of kind of how she's handicapping the upsides versus the downsides. And also the ECB is about to undergo a big monetary policy framework rethink. And so what she's looking at there.